Welcome to a bite-sized PD session on using Brightspace Portfolio. This is Craig Spencer, part of the Innovative Education Department at the Durham District School Board. If you're looking for any assistance after the session, you can always email our department at innovative.education at ddsb.ca. Brightspace Portfolio is part of D12 Brightspace, or the virtual learning environment provided by the Ministry of Education. This tool is safe and secure and complies with our board's privacy in terms of use. Students and teachers can both collect artifacts about their learning and categorize them against classroom custom tags or with uh, curriculum expectations. Student portfolios follow the students year to year and they always have access to their old portfolios as well as the students' future teachers, which means if you are a teacher and you have last year's students coming in, you'll have access to their portfolios from the previous teacher. Portfolios also available on all devices. Getting started with Brightspace Portfolio is pretty easy. Beginning at the Teacher Mobile Campus, teacher.ddsb.ca, click on D2 Brightspace. If prompted to log in, use your regular username at ddsb.ca and your regular computer password. From here, looking under My Courses, you'll see your different school years that you have access to. Currently is 2018 to 2019, so I'm starting at my 1819 tab, and I'll see this year's class. Right now, this class says it's inactive, which means it's not visible to students. If I click on the Classroom tab, it'll take me into my online classroom space. To activate this course to allow students to have access, I click on Course Admin, followed by Course Offering Information. On this page, I'm able to rename the class if I want to, and also check off Courses Active. Checking this box and clicking on Save activates my course and make sure, that, make sure that my students are added properly from PowerSchool. Now to get started with Portfolio, I click on the Portfolio icon in the navigation bar at the top. Once this loads, you'll see that all of your students are already active in your course, and each student gets their own Portfolio um, link. From here, if I want to use the app, I then click on Print Class Pass Cards. This will create a PDF for each of my students in my class. The first card that prints off, where it says Mr. Spencer's FTK class, is my class um, QR code, which will correspond with the iPad. Once I print these off, you can arrange these with students however you wish. Some teachers like to print these off and put them on a, like a keychain where they can flip through them. Um, others like to glue a copy to student notebooks or tape them to desks or tape them to a wall where students can access. The whole point is that students are able to scan their own QR code and access their own learning. Well, hey there. Can you show me your pass card, please? <gasps> Can I see some of your cool work?
Hold still. Hold still. Hold still. Hold still. Do you like the way this looks? Can I hear more about your work? Tap the button to start recording. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye bye. Once some evidence has been added to my class and the students have collected the artifacts using an iPad or any other device, as a teacher, I can come into my class and click on Portfolio again in D2L. From here, I can now click on the Approve Evidence tab and see what's been submitted. On the left-hand side, you'll see a list of all your students, and you'll see a notification at the top showing that in the class there are two new artifacts. It also shows you by student who those artifacts belong to. So in this case, I've collected two as training student one, and they both belong to the student. On the right hand side, you would see um, a preview of all the artifacts that have been collected that haven't been looked at by the teacher yet. So for example, this video I just took using the in-class mode, if I click on it, it allows me to add some more feedback for this, for this artifact. I can now play back the video I can also play back the student's audio recording. And on the right hand side, this allows me to add some teacher feedback. So here I could add, um, you know, something like, right, so I can leave some feedback for them and post that. I also have the opportunity to do teacher only feedback. So here I can add, uh, messages, so something for myself. So for example, um, I can leave a private note that the student will not see. This helps me at report card time or progress reporting where I can come back and take a look at what I had written down. Below that, I can also type on behalf of the student. So this gives me a great chance to pull over, pull a student in for conversation and type on their behalf or give us probing questions. Um, sometimes our students also don't like elaborate on what they've learned. So I could come in here and say, um, and talk about why they like using their computer. Okay, so I can do some conferencing. And below that, I can also add categories to my work. So in here, the kindergarten categories are already added. So if I click on add category, I can choose some of the default categories, for example, literacy and demonstrating literacy and mathematics behavior. But I can also add my own. So I might add uh, digital literacy. So 
as a category and click on add to use it. Okay. So I can add as many as I want. And then once I add, add them once in my class, they'll pop up automatically for me. From here, I can click back. And now I can actually approve to portfolio. You might also find that students are taking selfies and you can also just delete their evidence uh, if it's something you don't want to add to their portfolio. Sometimes you might also have students come in and add a lot at once and you want to approve everything at, as the class is one. So you can actually click on bulk actions and say approve all and approve everything or categorize all and say, you know, everything that was collected recently was an art project. So I'm going to say visual arts and classify everything that's sitting there in the queue as visual arts and then approve all. And that would send all of the artifacts into student portfolios. So now you see I have nothing left to review. And now if I click on class portfolios, I can actually go into an individual student and see what we've added. So for example, training student one, if I click on this artifact or this portfolio, I will see all the artifacts that have been collected over time. This gives me a chance to do a few things. One is I can click on these stars below an artifact and spotlight it which means it'll appear at the top. This is a great option if you're coming up to a parent interview and you want to categorize a few artifacts to show off, or if you want the student to go in and actually pick a few uh, that represents them the best. You can also click on filter, and this lets you filter by the categories you've chosen in your class. So for example, if I want to choose everything uh, that demonstrates literacy mathematics behaviors, I can click here and the artifact I just chose will appear. If you've added your own class categories, they'll appear under class categories. So I can click here and choose one of those categories I just added. Okay. You can also individually print off one student pass card. So for example, if you have a student who's just added to your class, you could come here and print off their card individually. Towards the bottom of a portfolio, this is where you'll actually access last year's portfolios too. So if this student came to me in grade six, for example, I could go back and see their grade five and grade four portfolios if the teachers had used them. As a teacher, you can also click uh, in a student's portfolio and click on add the portfolio and upload directly from your computer or iPad from your Google Drive or Office 365. So if you happen to be uh, collecting evidence on your computer, you can also upload directly to their portfolio. A student can also access their portfolio through the website as well. So I'm going to switch windows here. So this is my training student one. Pretend they've logged into D2L. They can now click on my portfolio right from the home page. And they'll see the classes they're enrolled in. So they may see multiple classes or just one. And here's my FTK class. If I click on this, the student can access their own portfolio as well. And they can also click on add to portfolio and add evidence off the computer into their portfolio if you're not using mobile devices. The exact same way a teacher would. This is also a great way for a student to show their parent what they've been working on as well. Um, they can log in at home and, uh, and show their parents. As a teacher, you can also change some of the settings in your class. So on the main portfolio page, under settings, you can also choose when you want to approve evidence. So by default, uh, the middle one is checked off. So anytime a student is collecting artifacts in the class device mode, um, so using the iPad, evidence will be asked to be approved by the teacher. If you have students also submitting through uh, the website directly, you could also choose that anything they submit that way also needs to come for approval through you or unchecking these would, would allow all artifacts to go directly to a student's portfolio, and you sort of lose that chance um, to approve things as they go in. So as a teacher, you can choose. And up here, you can also choose if you want the little funster monster to appear on the class cards. So if that was not checked, uh, these cards would just have a blank face or the student's profile picture if they upload one. Something else you can do is actually categorize uh, artifacts based on curriculum expectations. To do that, there's a couple steps you need to do first. The first thing you need to do is click on content in D12 Brightspace. Even if you're not planning to use content, you need to come here to add the expectations. From here, you can click on expectations. 
And we're gonna click on add or remove expectations. For jurisdiction, we'll choose Ontario. And then we can choose a subject area. So for this case, I'm going to pretend that I am a, a junior teacher and I'm gonna choose science and technology. Um, I'm gonna choose 2007, actually, yep. And I'll choose, uh, let's say grade four for this example. Here I can then check off whichever uh, strands I wanna import. Uh, I can also break it down by overall and specific expectations if I want. But if I just check out the general strands, it'll bring in everything. Click on import selected components and all those expectations will be added to my course. The neat thing is in uh, Brightspace, I can actually track my content against these. But for portfolio specifically, once I add them there and go back to portfolio, I can then go into one of my artifacts in one of my students' portfolios. And now when I'm actually adding some feedback, I'll have this expectation box. When I click on add expectations, uh, the expectations that I've loaded in my class will appear. And I can choose uh, uh, which ones this artifact represents. And at the bottom, I can click on add. And now it will actually let me know that this artifact covers these specific expectations. So you do have to add those once to your class, um, and that's in the content area. Final couple of tips for you. Um, you will find information about using uh, Brightspace Portfolio if you're looking for more instructions uh, by clicking on the Home button in D2L. And under Teacher Resources, there is a section here on Portfolio. This will walk through uh, various videos that have been provided by DDSB and also by uh, D2L themselves, and also instructions to access Brightspace Portfolio instructions. This link is up to date with the most recent um, additions and, and features that you can use. You'll also notice that in your class, um, if, you're a if you teach a, a split grade, um, because classes come from PowerSchool, a split actually creates two different homeroom classes. This can be confusing, especially in kindergarten, where you end up with two different class pass cards and uh, it's confusing for students to scan the correct class card. You can request to have your courses merged together. So if you have two grades, you can combine them into one class. This can be done by going to teacher resources and clicking on merge courses requests. To do this, you'll need to walk through this form, filling in the required information. Um, it will ask for the D2L class code. And to get that, if I just jump back into my class, you can find the D12 course offering code under course admin by going to course offering information. And it's this offering code right here. You just need to copy and paste that when you're filling in the form. It's pretty much it for getting started with Brightspace portfolio. Remember, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to the innovative education team, to any of the facilitators or to the coach at your school. Our email is innovative.education at ddsb.ca. Good luck and have fun using Portfolio.